flirty fiancé gets what she deserves. My fiancé, 27 female, and I, 28 male, have been together since college and decided to tie the knot. Karen, my fiancé, was the one to pop the question to me. Honestly, I never really considered marriage since our relationship was rocky from the start. We had been dating for a while, and I caught her being overly flirty with guys a few times. I don't believe anything was happening, but it wasn't very pleasant, and I put my guard up. A couple of years into our relationship, Karen brought the conversation around to marriage, pointing out that some of our friends that had met were already married and had started families. I could tell where the conversation was going, so I told her that I didn't think she was ready to settle down since she kept hitting on other guys. That shocked her. She started trying to defend herself, saying it was just innocent play and that I was overstating what had happened. I ended the conversation by telling her I would not propose. She started to freak out, so I told her she could propose to me when she was ready to settle down. But that meant she needed to stop the flirting. I told her this was the only way to ensure I wasn't pressuring her into a permanent relationship. Karen was miffed, but she agreed that she would be the one to propose if she felt that we were ready. I just remembered the conversation from about six months ago. We were out to dinner with a bunch of our friends. After dinner and dessert, she said she had something to ask me, so I turned my attention to her and said, Sure, what's up? She got a little smile, dropped dramatically to her knee, and pulled out a box. She opened it up, and it was an empty ring box with a little jeweled heart stuck into the cushion. I looked up into her eyes, and she just said, John, I love you with all my heart, and I'm ready to commit to you forever. Will you marry me? All of her friends started screaming and jumping around. I was confused and unsure what I wanted, but I said yes because I didn't want a scene. To be clear, I still cared for Karen a lot, and I would even say I loved her. I figured I had time and would push out the date long enough to ensure we were ready. Everyone seemed happy about the relationship, but a few people on both sides of our friendship just smiled and went with the flow. Karen was in her element for the next few months and started drawing me into a relationship. Karen is cute and bubbly. But I wouldn't say she's gorgeous. She's a 5 or 6 brunette in the healthy 140-150 range. She's not overweight. She's well-rounded with an attractive lush body and likes good food. She's not a salad eater and she enjoys eating out. The first sign of distress in our relationship was that she kept going to look at wedding dresses and started shopping. A lot. I could tell she wasn't spending money, but became obsessed with going out. The typical signs of spending more and more time on her phone and staying out late from time to time got my attention. About a month after this started, I came home one day and heard her out back on our balcony talking to someone on the phone in her cutesy, flirty voice. I stepped into the kitchen, partly blocked from her sight, and started to listen to the conversation. It went on for about 20 minutes before she noticed the time and told the person she was talking to that she needed to get off the phone because her stupid ex-boyfriend, now roommate, would be home soon and that she didn't want a scene. I turned and walked to the refrigerator and opened the door, taking out beer and opening it. As the back door opened and Karen came in, I drank the entire bottle. With a shocked look, Karen stopped in the doorway and said, Oh, you're home. When did you get in? I looked at her and said it was about 20 minutes ago. I walked out of the kitchen and into our bedroom, closing the door. Karen came in a few minutes later and started some small talk with me as soon as I got out of the shower. I could tell she was fishing to see if I had overheard her conversations. I let her drone on for a few minutes. I told her I was unhappy that this was happening again, letting her know I overheard what she said about our relationship. I left the bedroom and said I couldn't take this anymore. She followed me out of the room, and we had a big argument about her behavior and my mistrust of her. I could see her building up her courage, and finally, she told me she wanted to open our relationship for a while to ensure we had made the right decision. I laughed in her face. She tried to make it sound like it was the best thing ever. I told her that was fine. I took out my phone and posted on my SM that I was open to dating again since I was now single. I grabbed some of my stuff and headed out the door. When Karen's friends asked about my post, she started spamming my phone. I just ignored her. When I got home the next evening, she was sitting on the couch with a worried look. When the door closed, she got up, came to me, and hugged me, telling me she loved me and was wrong for what she had said the day before. I looked her in the eyes and said, I bet, then extracted myself from her and got cleaned up, not saying another word.
I went into the bathroom, showered quickly, brushed my teeth, and prepared for bed. There's a wad of tissue as I drop my floss into the garbage can. I look at it for a minute and see the torn cover of a condom wrapper. A couple of things were very wrong about this. Karen and I had not used a condom in at least a week. The garbage had been emptied a couple of days ago. The packages of the brand I use are yellow. This was a black wrapper with magnum on it. I'm guessing that a big wad of toilet paper held the used condom. I took the entire wastebasket to her and held it out. The confused look on her face turned to horror as she figured out what I had found in the garbage. I turned around and said, Okay, now I know the rules of this open relationship. She started trying to explain something to me, but I stopped listening. I left shortly after with Karen crying on the couch, begging me to stay and talk. I had a friend named Brandon who was always bragging about having to use Magnum condoms. This is the same Brandon who always found a reason to talk to Karen. Honestly, I never really thought they would connect in any way since Karen always hated how he bragged about everything he did. I guess now he can add taking my fiancé and banging her. I left the house and went to a buddy's place to hang out and decompress since my life had taken a pretty ugly turn. Later that night, many other friends came to the house to hang out including Britt, Karen's former best friend from a few years back. Karen and Britt had some falling out that nobody even pretended to understand. A few of Karen's friends had said it was about my relationship with Karen. I always believed Britt didn't like me since Karen told me she had said rude things about me. I later learned that Karen lied to me and stopped talking to Britt because Britt liked me too. During the evening, my situation came out to most people at the impromptu party. Britt shyly approached me when I was sitting outside just chilling out. We talked for a couple of hours, having a pleasant conversation. I was able to step away from the mental drama of the last couple of days. That lasted another hour until Karen arrived at the house and demanded to see me. My buddy told her I wasn't up to talking and that she should leave me alone. That didn't deter Karen. She bullied past him and started looking for me. Unfortunately for Karen, she found me laughing and having a wonderful time with Brit. Karen almost lost her mind seeing me sitting with her former best friend. She started yelling at me, saying I should be home with her and that she'd been waiting for me. Seriously? Much to the surprise of Brit, I just calmly told Karen that she opened the relationship and that I was done with her after she had sex with Brandon on my bed. I told her that she effectively used her open relationship demand for masking hooking up with Mr. Magnum. I told her that we were no longer a couple and that she needed to move out of my house. Karen went into denial mode, saying we were getting married and I needed to come home with her. Britt was sitting there quietly, taking in the conversation as this was going on. Karen turns her attention to Britt and starts calling her every nasty name she can think of and telling her to stay away from me. She finally threatens that she won't warn her again. I told Karen that I would talk to anyone I wanted since I was single. Karen started crying and stormed off, saying she found a real man. Britt just sat there quietly through the entire exchange with an annoyed look. I apologized to Britt, who hugged me and said not to worry. Britt asked me about this open relationship thing, so I cautiously told her what happened, including finding Brandon's used condom in my wastebasket. Britt looked me in the face and asked if I wanted to return to my place and get a little revenge. I asked what she meant. She just said, let's give her a show with a big smile. I must have looked perplexed because Britt slowly said, let's go F. She said she wanted a piece of revenge pie too. I'm not an idiot, so I agreed without hesitating. It took us about 15 minutes to get to my place, and by the time we got there, Britt was kissing me in the car. We went into the house, and Britt started taking off her clothes as she walked through the house behind me, letting them drop as we walked back to the bedroom. Britt was a long-distance runner, and her body was amazing. No soft curves, just lean athletic perfection. I was lying on my back with Britt kneeling in front of me using her mouth when the front door opened. The bedroom door was partially closed. Britt started talking to me in a voice that Karen couldn't miss, telling me what she wanted me to do to her. Karen flung the bedroom door open, her face a mask of what I could only describe as rage. Britt looked at Karen holding my junk without missing a beat and told her I was hers now and to get lost. Karen was sobbing as she ran out. Britt and I had a fantastic night and have been seeing each other since. Karen showed up at the house at some point that weekend and took all of her stuff when I was out with Brit. When I came home, the place looked like a tornado hit it, but nothing was broken. Word got around about my status change, and the people at the party talked about what they had seen. 
To be honest, I'm not super proud of myself for how I handled the whole situation. I should have refused the open relationship and broken it off with Karen from the start. The only thing I can say in my defense is, I felt humiliated by Karen, and the chance to take a shot back at her was the correct medicine for me. Brit's great, and we're getting to be very close. We are a couple, and I've started running with her in the mornings. We plan on going to Met Hood in Oregon in a few weeks for me to meet her family and do some hiking. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. I have not seen or heard from Karen since she left. Some of our friends said she has been spending more time with people from where she works and has been talking about moving back east. I do hope the best for whomever she ends up with. She just doesn't seem like someone that's going to settle down. I only post new and unique content. Please like and subscribe.